we're out here for the opening of our West Coast Outpost, one market in San Francisco. And you better believe that we're talking with some of the most important technology companies on Earth while we're here. It's hard to get more important than Intel, the world's largest semiconductor company. Now, regular viewers know that despite all of its innovation into new businesses like the data center, the Internet of Things, Intel has been constrained by the fact that it still gets the lion's share of its revenues from the personal computer business at a time when the PC is in secular decline. Still, though, the stock is pretty darn inexpensive here. And while the company's latest quarter reported a couple of weeks ago wasn't perfect, it was also a lot better than many people feared. Plus, under the leadership of Brian Krasanich, the brilliant engineer who took the helm nearly two years ago, I think we could start seeing some great things from Intel going forward that could change this company far more quickly than you think. Don't take it from me. Let's check in with Brian Krasanich, the CEO of Intel, to hear about what he has to say about the future of his company. This is a first on CNBC interview. Mr. Krasanich, welcome to Man Money. Oh, it's my pleasure, Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Intel right now is pivoting. You've got an older business that you dominate, client computing, but then you've got all these new businesses. I want to hear about the new businesses and what's driving the Intel of the future. Sure, Jim. You, you know, our, our business model is that we generate IP usually around the, the PC and the data intellectual center. Property. Right. Yeah, intellectual property. Yes, intellectual property. And then and then we take that into a broad range of devices from, from the PC down all the way to the IoT and wearables. And, and one example we have of that now is our RealSense camera. And our RealSense camera is uh, something that came out of our desire to get people off their keyboard, off their mouse, and, and let them just use their hands. But what we've done is taken that intellectual property now and, and done it so that it can now look out into the world and, and spread it well beyond. And we had a chance, I believe last night, to use one of our tablets with real sense in it uh, to do a scan of you. Yeah, and uh, I'm not as much of a gamer as you are. I read your Reddit interview, I know you're a gamer, but my kids are. And the first thing I thought of was like, why would I ever want someone else's face on, the, when I can have my face on the character? Yeah, and you saw, we were able to scan your whole body in just a couple of minutes. And so the ability to then take that, that and either build a, 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 a little image of you or transfer you into a game is a great example of that technology. Now, you also have to deal with the fact that the client computing is 7.4 billion in the last quarter, data center 3.7, internet things uh, less than a billion. Do you have to get the data center internet things to be bigger than client computing to get things really so that we don't just think about you as a gross margin play on microprocessors? Yeah, you know, I, I think of Intel as a company that's driven by two things, Moore's Law and compute. And, and, and so what a lot of people don't know is even in the first quarter, uh, roughly 40% uh, of our revenue and 60% of our margin was, was generated by data center, IoT, and memory. Uh, so Internet that, of things. yeah, uh, Internet of Things, and that is the area that we're trying to really be a growth. And so we're getting to a place where we're able to get that, uh, you know, to where the company is more balanced between the classical PC and these other areas. All right, Moore's law. I figure one day I, I won't even be able to see the chip; it'll be more powerful than a mainframe. Is that coming? Yeah, you know, I have a great example here. We showed this at CES. This button is actually a computer that I walk around with. This is Curie which was uh, uh, basically the first substantiation of a wearable. And, you know, with a small little battery, this can be powered for a month on end. And oh, come on. measure your steps, your environment, all kinds of things. Well, it, you know, look, I've got the Apple, all right. I mean, can that do more than this? Uh, the Apple iWatch can do a bit more than this right now. But give us a year or two, and we can, we can take the technology there and put it into a button. Drones, too? Yeah, so, so the real sense, this is, we brought this along to show you as an example. Um, what we've done now is taken that intellectual property we built on the PC and we're pushing that across a variety of devices. The drone here that we've got has the ability to see and think now. And we demonstrated this at CES, but we flew it through a forest at 12 miles an hour, unaided by humans, and it just dodged around the trees because it could see the trees. And that's really where, if we want to get drones to be commercially usable, they have to be able to be... And that's what Amazon certainly wants. At, you know, all of the people. It's not oh, just that. Well, let me ask you, Brian. All these exciting things, and yet, obviously, in the news, uh, Altera turned down your bid. Why do you even need an Altera? Why can't you just do it on your own? Look at the kinds of things you got coming. Yeah, I, I can't comment on rumors about, you know, that are in the press. But, but in general, the way we think about it is, 
you want to have a, a nice supply line of your internal technology that you're developing. There are cases, and that's always first. You always right. find that first and you drive that first. There are cases where we want to go outside and do acquisition for intellectual property or to get market share. And we're not afraid to go do that at times. But the, the rumors out there, there's a bunch of them, and I can't comment on any well, of those. I mean, do you feel like you need to be more like a NXPI or a Skyworks or an Avago? I mean, companies that are the guts of, uh, have an Apple or a Samsung uh, uh, phone. You know, that's a portion of our strategy. Right. Yes, we want to have it. You, you, you've got to have a modem today. You've got to have modem and you've got to have connectivity, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all of those areas. You've got to have it for whether you're building a PC. Our estimate is 20, 25% of the PCs a couple of years from now will have a modem in them. Right. The drone needs to be connected. All of these devices need to be connected. Well, but you know, you still have a very big market out there. There's 600 million PCs. Are they going to be replaced by something else or is there a replacement uh, cycle that we should still look forward to for Intel? So I, I think it's going to be a mix. There's, there's definitely, yes, there's about 600 million PCs that are greater than four years old. And there's an opportunity there. Um, you know, we think when you bring out some of the next generation products, as Windows 10 comes out, they're doing upgrades to Chrome. You know, we've really tried to be uh, OS agnostic right. uh, operating systems and really bring out innovation around that. So, yes, I believe there will be that. We've also, as you saw, we are in tablets now, and that's something two years and ago. And that was a good growth item in this last quarter. It was a great growth item, and we're now working on really becoming much more cost-effective and, and, and um, you know, really getting our margins there. And then we're in phones. I, my guess is we'll be somewhere around 15 million phones this year. It's not, you know, the huge number right. that is yet, but it's the start. What we've done now is we're bringing innovation. This is a phone that we'll, we just uh, demonstrated that has that same real sense camera in it. That had me 360. Right, 3D. so now imagine you can take your phone out and you know, you're missing a part or you see something or you wanna play a game, you can just scan your buddy real time, put him in the game and start playing. So it's when you bring that kind of innovation to these devices that we can break in. Okay, uh, all of these together, I know you call it the new Intel. You brought a device, Atom X3, in one and a half years. Can Intel really move so fast that we will look at Intel and stop talking about, oh, 60.1% gross margin sell, 60.2% gross margin buy? Can we get away from that whole constraint of the canvas? I, 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 that's one of my big goals. It's it is, isn't it? it? It's to show people that we are an innovation engine and that innovation will drive growth. And, and we've had to turn it back on and really get it moving faster. And, and I think the X3, you're right, it wasn't even on our roadmap. People weren't even talking about it. But that's it. so different from the Intel I know. I, I'm talking about a three, four year cycle in the old Intel. And what we're looking at now is we are discussing products last week that we are trying to get out by the end of this year that bring out battery life improvements. And you know, you see- Fanless, I know you're working on that. Fanless devices, right? There's Broadwell fanless devices today. Skylake comes out second half of this year, even more fanless devices. But you've seen the PC stick, right? Right. Imagine something that powerful that could be, fit in your wallet. Well, that no would be longer major. a stick, right? That would be major. We have goals like that in that same time frame you saw of the Atom X3. Right. Well, we can't just think about, about Intel with a snapshot. We've got to think about it as a, as a long-term movie. That's Brian Chrysanis, he's Intel CEO. More from uh, one market coming up on Mad Money. We'll be right back. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.